Hello and welcome to today's lesson on the practical skills required for A-level physics. In today's lesson we're going to focus on experimental methods and you should be able to write an experimental method which produces valid results for A-level physics. Now in today's lesson if we're being successful and we've learned we can understand what is needed in a comprehensive experimental method we can write a comprehensive experimental method and we can evaluate scientific methods accurately, which forms the following part of the AQA A-level physics specification. So we're going to be looking at solving problems set in practical contexts, apply scientific knowledge to practical contexts, and then comment on experimental design and evaluate scientific methods. Now overall, at least 15% of your marks for all A-level physics courses will require the assessment of practical skills. Now for A QA, the majority of these marks will be found on A-level physics paper 3. Now in order to be able to answer these questions, students need to have been taught and have acquired confidence in the appropriate areas of practical skills as indicated in the table below. So the idea of independent thinking, the use and applications of scientific methods and practices, numeracy and the application of mathematical concepts in practical contexts, and finally the use of instruments and equipment. Now over the next few lessons we'll look at the different types of questions which can assess your understanding on these practical skills and we'll look at how to answer these types of questions. So like the GCSE, in a level physics there are several practical activities in fact there are 12 of them so investigating the variation of frequency of the stationary wave on a string with length tension and mass p with length of the string the investigation of an interference effects using a double slit and a diffraction gradient the determination of g by free fall the determination of the young's modulus by a simple method the determination of the resistivity of a wire the investigation of emf and internal resistance of electrical cells and batteries the investigation of simple harmonic motion using a mass spring and a simple pendulum the investigation of boyle's law and charles's law for constant pressure for a gas and then investigating the charge and discharge of a capacitor investigating the force on a wire with flux density, current and length of wire, investigating using a search coil and an oscilloscope the effect of the magnetic flux linkage on the with the variation of angle between the search coil and the magnetic field, and finally investigation the inverse square law for gamma radiation. But unlike the GCSE qualification, questions found are on the A level are not likely to be based on these practical activities. It's important to build your competency in each practical skill so you can apply this to different applications and experiments. So whilst a couple of the questions on your A level physics paper will be based on those required practical activities, most of them will be on experiments you've never come across before and the aim is for you to apply your knowledge and understanding to different contexts and applications as opposed to just learning several practical so in today's lesson, we're going to look at how to design an experiment correct, correctly by writing an experimental method which can gain valid results. So it's a common examination question to ask students to write an experimental method to derive a particular value or set of values. Now to carry out this task, and answer this question, you split your response into three different sections. So section one, independent and dependent variables. So in this section, you identify your independent variable and your dependent variable. You state how each variable will be measured with the correct measuring device, and you state the range and interval of the independent variable for your investigation. Now it's important to note that the range of the independent variable must be as large as possible while still being safe to carry out the experiment because the experimental range is the set of values for which the conclusion or the trend or the value calculated is valid for. So if it's a smaller range the, the trend or the value you calculate is not valid for as much information. Now the interval of the independent variable should give at least five values for the dependent variable because this allows for your line of best fit or your trend or your constant you calculated to be established easily. Now the second section you want to include in your answer is experimental technique. Now in this section you want to identify any control variables and how you will control them. You will identify any way the experimental technique can be modified to reduce the uncertainty in your measurements and then you can discuss carrying out repeated measurements and calculating the average 
if it's appropriate. Now remember, when you carry an algorithm repeats, you might have a GCSE said I will do the experiment three times and calculate the average, but there's no actual reason as to why you pick three times to repeat the experiment. It tends to be three times because that's the minimum number to establish whether you've got the same number each time and in terms of the time constraints of a GCSE lesson. In theory, in science, measurements should be repeated until concordance, similar values, are achieved. So, repeating readings until consistent values are achieved reduces the random error of the results. Now, the third section on your response should be talking about the graph you would draw. So, you would state the graph that will be drawn from the experimental data gathered previously, and then if you need to derive a value from a graph, look at the ways the y and the x axis values can be adjusted to get a straight line of best fit then put the experimental equation into the form of y equals mx plus c and work out how to calculate the wanted value. So, remember, when you're writing your response to write an experimental method to either derive a value or a set of values or to prove a hypothesis, there are three sections. Section 1, writing about your independent and dependent variables. Section 2, talking about your experimental technique when you carry out the investigation. And finally, what graph you would draw and how you would use the graph to work out the value wanted in the question. Now remember, when writing your answer, split your answer into paragraphs addressing each part of the question which is stated. It's likely that the experiment will not be an experiment you've carried out in class. This is to be expected. You've got to apply your understanding to different situations. At A-level, it's getting those key skills and applying them to as many different contexts as possible. And then finally, use any information given in the question to help structure your answer. So if it's an experiment you've never seen before and they give you a diagram of the equipment, look at the information carefully and make sure you fully understand what's going on. Now, when considering an experimental method and you've wrote your answer, Think about the following things before you finish your response. So number one, does the method actually test what is being asked to? Is the method clear enough for someone else to follow? Apart from the independent and dependent variable, what is being controlled and how? Are the apparatus and the techniques used appropriate for what is being measured? So for example, if you're measuring length, is a meter ruler appropriate? Is a screw gauge micrometer appropriate? Think about what device you're using. And also think about the technique with which you use the device. How is it being used correctly? Will the method give precise results? Now again, in this context, precise means values of similar quantities. So for example, 7.2, 7.3, and 7.2 are precise results because the variation, the spread, the range of the data is not that large. Now, are, repeat, are repeated measurements needed to be taken in this investigation? And if so, how much and what you're going to do with the measurements? And is the experiment going to be conducted safely and ethically? So when you choose your values for measurements, or when you consider your experimental technique, is the experiment safe when they're doing this? Now, traditionally, Questions where students must write or evaluate an experimental method is poorly answered. So here are some feedback from examiners indicating how students can achieve full marks when they're asked this type of question in an A-level physics examination. So students should be encouraged to describe how to change one variable and to give a suitable range of values, so you've got to actually give numerical values, as well as specifying how many sets of results to take. So it's not enough just to say, I will carry out a certain number of results, you've got to actually state the values you're going to use and how many repeats you're going to take. It is also expected that students will describe graphical methods of processing results, including, where relevant, the significance of intercepts and gradients. Always think about what is your y-intercept, what is your x-intercept, and what is your gradient of your graph going to tell you from your experimental results. Now, to gain credit for suggesting repeated measurements, Students must be specific about which readings are repeated, so what values are you going to do again, and they must mention the averaging of those measurements. 
Another bit of feedback said, students found it harder to describe the way in which a suitable range of set of results could be obtained, and few mentioned the advisability of taking repeat measurements of each set of the PD and current in order to find the mean values. So always talk about the idea of repeat measurements. It should be noted that general statements that lacks, such as results should be repeated and average are not likely to attract marks reward for students to be specific about which measurements should be repeated. Although many students suggested that such a graph is a straight line when the suggested relation is correct, few mention that it goes through the origin. So that's important again. If you need to prove something is directly proportional, obviously the graph you would draw is a straight line through the origin. Now, another bit of feedback says, the plans seem lack details on how to vary the independent variable and how to record the value dependent variable. Again, you've got to make sure you talk about how you're going to change your values, what you're going to actually do in your experiment, and what devices are you going to use to record your information for your measurements. Now, many students did not know how to process the data to obtain a straight line graph. So make sure you can rearrange an equation to get the experimental equation in the form of y equals mx plus c, and then derive values as appropriate. Now, examiners insisted on seeing that the dependent variable was read or measured or recorded. These are the terms examiners expect students to use if similar questions are posed in future papers. Now, students can give an expression to show how their grading can be manipulated to obtain a value, but examiners are expected for the value to be the subject of this expression. So you can work, you can link your gradient or your y-intercept or your x-intercept to the value wanted in the question, but you've got to clearly show how to work it out and derive your equation. Now, here's an example question which you could be asked to write an experimental method which will be found for A-level AQA physics in paper 3. So the question could be, describe how you would use a circuit to determine accurate values of the EMF and the internal resistance. Now you should include in your uh, the following details in your description. The measurements you would make, the range of values of the independent variable, how you would process and analyze the results to determine EMF and internal resistance, and how you would ensure the accuracy of the values of EMF and internal resistance. And this is worth five marks in an examination. Right, so if you get this type of question, address each point separately in a different paragraph. Next, ensure you state which quantity you will measure and which quantity you will vary in your investigation. So what are the values you're going to change, your independent, and what are the values you're going to actually measure, your dependent. Now you've got to make it clear that at least five different sets of the dependent variable will be taken by varying the independent variable. Now remember when you're doing this, state how you're going to vary your independent variable. What are you physically going to do? And then also, what are you physically going to do to measure your dependent variable? So you've got to clearly state this. You've got to indicate how you will do this. Now, you'll also need to clearly state with values the range and the interval of your independent variable in your investigation. Now, if necessary, state any experimental procedures which will minimize any experimental uncertainty with good experimental technique. So the first thing I'm thinking about in this question, it is about electricity. So you might want to talk about only having the circuit turned on when you're taking a measurement to reduce the circuit heating up unnecessarily. Now, if possible, state you repeat your experimental values until concordance is achieved and then an average is calculated. Now, this is done, remember, to reduce the random error in your res experimental results and decrease the absolute uncertainty of your experimental values. Because when you're calculating your absolute uncertainty, remember, when you're doing repeats, it's range over 2. So if you repeat it and repeat it and discard any anomalies, your range will be a lot smaller than if you didn't repeat it and you didn't discard any anomalies. Now, remember to state what graph will be drawn from your experimental values that you've gained in your investigation, and then state how you'd extract the wanted values, in this case, the EMF and the internal resistance from your graph. So here's an example answer. So I'll construct an electrical circuit with a power pack, ammeter and variable resistor in series, with a voltmeter in parallel with the power pack. I turn the power pack on to 10 volts, I alter the variable resistor so the current is 0.5 amps, clearly indicating how I would change my independent variable, the current, and then I would measure the potential difference across the power pack with the voltmeter. 
clearly indicating what device I will be using to measure my potential difference. Now, repeat this investigation until the results are concordant and calculate the average. So I state I will repeat it until I've achieved concordancy and I will calculate the average with these repeated results. I will then carry out the investigation for 0.5 amps, 1.0 amps, 1.5 amps, 2.0 amps and 2.5 amps. So I've indicated my interval and my range of my independent variable and I will measure the appropriate potential differences, clearly indicating to the examiner what I believe my dependent variable is. I will then draw a graph of the potential difference on the y-axis and the current on the x-axis. I will draw a line of best fit. So I've indicated in this answer the graph I would draw and then the EMF is going to be the y-intercept and R is the negative gradient of the line of best fit. So I've indicated how I then take that information to extract, uh, so, so I take information and extract the values I need. Now you'll notice in my answer in this one, I've not talked about control variables because really it wasn't asked in the question, but if I needed to, I could state that a control variable would be the measuring devices used and also the electrical wires in the circuit. That could be one particular control variable I could use. And I've not mentioned about experimental technique again, because it's not asked in the question. But again, like mentioned before, I could talk about not turning, uh, not turning on the circuit until I want to take my, me my measurements to prevent it from overheating. Now you'll notice again, I've considered safety in this aspect because I'm only using values of current which will not heat up the wire to a high level, so it's safe to use experimentally. But again, if you wanted to think about a safety measure, you could write that out explicitly as well. So let's look at the mark scheme for this particular question. So it makes appropriate measurements for a circuit. Uh, for at least five different sets of values with the means of varying V, a suitable range of values is specified, an appropriate graph is specified, how to extract EMF from the graph is specified, how to extract R from the graph is specified, and repeats and averages uh, and average measurements are specified. So there, I've hit all the marking points of the mark scheme. Now, just be aware, there's no one size fits all for these types of questions. You can write a different experiment uh, that achieves the same results as someone else and is still credited with full marks as long as A, the experiment you have wrote is valid, it is B, it is safe, and C, you can get the appropriate set of results. So there is variance and possible answers. As long as you satisfy those criteria, you will achieve full marks. So, if we're being successful, what we should have been able to do is solve problems set in practical contexts, apply scientific knowledge to practical contexts, and then comment on experimental design and evaluate scientific methods. So, if you've been successful and you've learned in today's lesson, you understand what is needed in a comprehensive experimental method, you can write a comprehensive experimental method and you can evaluate if a scientific method is comprehensive and accurate. I hope you've enjoyed today's lesson, looking at practical skills in A-level in a physics and focusing on how to write a valid and comprehensive experimental method. And have a lovely day.